Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Noel on the Discord, um, and I just got top four at the Ann Arbor Regional with Serene Luxum Xander. Um, it was a ton of fun to play, and I just want to first comment that full credit to this deck list goes to uh, my friend and teammate Pickle Sword. Uh, he's been playing Luxum since release, and he's been refining this variant of the deck since the release of Fractured Crown. Uh, complete credit goes to him. It would not exist without him. He thought of it. He built the list. I had him put on like two cards. Um, this is his deck. And I hope that I do it justice, giving a good explanation. And yeah, so today I went 4-1-1 over the six round regional. Um, I lost to uh, Erupting, um, my else friend and teammate Matthew G, um, uh, to team is Chess Club, um, if anyone doesn't know. Uh, an erupting. Um, then I drew round two against um, my other friends, uh, uh, Idle Thoughts, um, who also t was part of Chess Club originally for Houston. And then uh, after that, I played against, um, uh, and he was he was running uh, Arcane Rye, and we drew that. It was a very close game, very well played. Uh, we just went time right at the end of game three before either of us could kill. Uh, round three, I played against Wind Allies, and I won that one 2-1. One. Round four, I played against another Arcane Rye, and I beat that 2-0. Round five, I played against uh, Wind Allies. That one was on stream by True Champion Gaming. I won that one 2-0, and then round six, played against another Wind Allies, and won that one 2-1. Um, the reason that this, this deck is genuinely really good, it is best against ally-heavy um, metas. And so I chose it today because I expected uh, a lot of water allies. I expected a lot of people to be um, playing True Champion Gaming's list from Auckland. Um, as it turns out, I don't think there was a single water allies in the room. But the other deck I expected was a bunch of swarm allies, uh, the deck that TCG also made uh, for Houston and won with, because that deck has a very favorable matchup into water allies. And for both of those decks, this deck has a pretty good um, or like the Wind Owls is its absolute best matchup. Uh, I guess technically Water Merlin and Wind Merlin are pretty good, but otherwise, it, Wind, Wind Owls is what you want to be playing against. So I got lucky that I played against three of them here. Um, the two Ride X, I was lucky to be able to get out with a two with a win and a draw. Um, that is absolutely the worst matchup, and Erupting is also very bad. So it it took some good drawing to get here, but uh, I guess here's the deck profile, and I'll try to go through enough explanation of things, but I don't want to make it too long. So running Serene Fire, um, this is the heart and soul of the deck. The reason that it kind of works, um, you play it here almost entirely because of the Recover 6. Um, the 6 health uh, is incredibly important to the matchup. There are countless number of games where I've played this or Pickles played it. Your opponent tries to attack for game, you recover for 6, you're not able to activate Chalice of Blood, um, and then you're able to start recovering back with Luxum, you're able to Resolute Stand, and you just kind of take over the game. The six health recovery is extremely important. You're basically playing a 31 health champion on top of then all the recovers that you get from your Luxum cards. Um, and then the Glimpse six is also very relevant. You can just filter your opening hand because um, you want to get as many plus ones as possible because being down one is very challenging. And then this is the Xander deck. So we have their Xander's. Um, Xander's good. Uh, I can't wait for Death Executor. Always watching is not great. Um, his plus one power comes up. Um, it is especially impactful against water allies because you can Thieving Cut when they have a Karazi Trapper, and even if they reduce the damage, you'll still get the on-hit draw. Um, so that's pretty good, but otherwise this card's not good, and I'm excited to see what Deft Executor is. Um, and then we have Luxera's map. Uh, shout out to uh, my friend and teammate Rex uh, for loaning me his copy because three of the devs signed it. Uh, thank you devs for making an amazing game. And then Tariff Ring and Safeguard Amulet. Um, these two are almost always your materialize after Xander. You just want to not die, basically. Um, and these help you not die. Lantern, um, if you don't run this, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, Orb of Glitter. Um, Orb of Glitter, it was good all day. Um, really, it doesn't need to be Orb of Glitter. It can basically be any card that converts a floating memory into a draw. I liked Orb because it converts it into a draw, but also, well, I want to banish it. But the Glimpse one, um, you can do it before your Xander trigger. You can help filter, look for more Luxum cards. Basically, so it kind of, especially if you get it early and you get a grind game, it converts your float into more value than just one card compared to like Smoke Bombs or anything. Pickle likes Smoke Bombs more because it has more interaction. I like Orb of Glitter, um, but really it's, there. you could run and basically anything though. Uh, GCR, it's good, drawing card's good. Orb of Regret, um, 
This card's good. It's probably the least important card in the top 30 or in the in the the 12 card material deck. Um, but it helps when you get to level three and you don't see a lot of luck. So you just kind of need to fix your hand. Um, and then the last card is Chalice of Blood. This card is exceptional. This card is extremely important. Um, and you basically want to play Chalice every single game. You're just trying to build up your influence for your kill. This is the deck that I've never had more struggle figuring out material deck for in my entire life. There's like, I want to run a 20 card material deck because there's so many cards that are good for it that are very, very niche. Um, and it's not like niche based on matchup. It's just niche based on like board state when you want this ones like, like uh, smoke bombs or, or sorry, not smoke bombs, but like um, choking fumes or like curved dagger, fractured crown. Uh, we did test a variant with fractured crown. Um, and Flame Sweeps was pretty cool, but um, it ended up being pretty clunky. Flame Sweep doesn't work well with um, uh, Serene Fire because you can Lineage Lease and now you can't play it. Um, but yeah, also Fracture Crown is not great, but it's, it's fine. Uh, so there's the material deck. Hey everyone, it's Isaac. If you want to support us, get merch, or pre-order the next set from GA, then you should check out our website. Over on our website, you'll find stickers, t-shirts, playmats, and material deck sleeves, and the next set of Grand Archive for pre-order. So make sure to check that out. Also, if you like content, then you should check out our Patreon. Over there, we have an exclusive podcast series, extra gameplay videos, and articles written by us to help your competitive gameplay. In any case, if you like what we do here on YouTube, then don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help us out a lot. Thank you. Then moving on to the main deck, um, we have the Luxum package, uh, four Light Weavers, four Luxum Sight, four Gleaming Cut. These are the cards that you are revealing and getting effects off of. Uh, if you don't know, Salt does two damage, Sight recovers three, Gleaming Cut banishes to draw two. Um, they're why the deck kind of works. Um, Luxum Sight gives you room to breathe. I've probably had games where I've had effectively like 60-ish health give or take between these uh, recovers, fast gear heals, serene spirit and everything. Um, it's it's incredible. Um, it, it's also why the ally matchup is good because you can just start grinding through. Assault starts from your way allies, start clearing things. Um, cut builds up your influence. And assault's how you win the game. You just build up for a combo kill with light, which is assault. Um, then we have three uncover the plot. Um, it triggers your Luxem cards. It sort of gives you like an extra turn of Luxem effects. Um, it cycles a card to place itself. The very important thing for this deck is you need almost entirely cards that replace themselves. You basically can't go down to influence because you need to build up your influence to kill with Light Weaver's Assault because um, it does damage based on the number of cards in your memory. Um, so this is very good. I want to play four. I tried four. It's just a little clunky at four since you can't play it early. Um, it's good with Thieving Cut. Just give you extra prep counters. This card's great. Nothing really ex exceptional, I guess. I don't know. Thick Excalibur. Um, this card's amazing. Um, it didn't actually come up all day. It's how you kill Majestic Spirit. But even against other decks, it just kills an ally. It's very efficient removal. It's fast speed, which is great. Um, yeah. And then I played as well two Uther. Um, <laughs> this, this was my contribution to the deck list. Um, I was talking with Pickle, and I was like, uh, what about Uther? And at first... Um, or I was, I was talking with um, the whole chess club, and we were saying, I don't know, like, his effect's pretty mad, but, like, he's still a 4-4 body, and I'm like, I'm gonna try it. I'll try it. I'll side in against allies. I side in, and I'm like, wow. Uther feels amazing. And the reason is because 4 cost is rough. It, you don't get him the turn you level up, you get him the turn after. You play him down, and you ignore his effect. You never activate his effect. Um, like, that might as well be blank. I've used his effect once in the past month and a half playing this deck. Um, and it was just to clear buff counters off of a creature. Um, uh, cause, uh, cause they had three buff counters on a, on a woodland squirrel. And I'm like, yeah, we're just gonna remove that so that Uther doesn't die to retaliation. Um, but then he comes down, he's a 4-4 intercept vigor. Um, so he comes down, you don't use effect, you attack, you kill an ally, he wakes up, they'll attack into him, you're tight, you kill another ally, he dies. So effectively Uther, two for one on allies, and he saved you for life, he gained you for life, however you want to think about it. Um, very impactful against allies. Um, yeah. Then, uh, is a fire deck, technically. Um, we run eight fire cards, four creative shock and four increasing danger. Um, cremation ritual would be good, except you can't cremation and play a, like a shield mate or like a library witch turn one. Um, so because of that, you, it's not 
it's not good. Um, it would be good, but it's not. Um, yeah. Uh, these are all plus ones, though, and they help filter through your deck. Uh, they're very important. Uh, then it's level three deck, so we are running four dungeon guide, um, obviously, and then four resolute stands. We are at three for a very long time, and the reason because it is a minus one, and if you alt cost it, it is a minus two. But because I was putting such a heavy ally field, I bumped to four. I'm very glad that I did bump to four. Um, yeah, it's resolute. Uh, it just, I mean, so buying a turn in this deck is like more valuable than other decks because you get value out of your Lux and reveals every turn. Um, and just buying the next turn is really kind of what you need all the time. Uh, then the float package, um, four stalwart shield mate, four fast cure, two gentle respite. Um, respite's almost always just a floating memory. Um, you occasionally are able to activate it to draw a card and get a plus one. Great when you can. Don't plan on it. Um, these are just here for creative shock. Um, and otherwise they're neutral cards, like shield mate against allies, saves two damage, levels up, you're not going down influence in the fast cure, you can recover. I recovered a ton this weekend. Float's good. Uh, more would be clunky. And then uh, the uh, the card that people are confused when they see, Juggle Knives and Scratch Skies. Um, these are amazing. Do not cut them. There's been a lot of times where like people ask people for the deck list. He's given it to them, and then they tweak it, and they cut down on these cards. And people just like, why are people cutting like, some of the best cards in the deck from the list? Like, have they, like, you need to play with the deck, understand the deck, these cards are amazing. Once you're level three, they're just finding more Luxem cards. Um, Scry looks four cards deep. It almost always hits a Luxem card. Juggle's fast speed, which is you put stuff into um, influence at fast speed, like you can level up. Xanatrick on the stack, activate Juggle Knives, put cards down. I think I did that on the stream that I played. Um, it's good. Um, technically against Rai, you can pop, pop, pop a spell shield. That never came up, but worth noting. Um, then for Theming Cut, this card is absolutely incredible. Um, I legitimately think this is one of the better cards in the game. Um, it's not broken by any means. It's just incredibly efficient. Um, I mean, if Xander was better, it, I'd say it could be kind of broken, but it's, it's a two-cost removal spell that replaces itself. That's really, really, really good. Um, yeah. Um, and notably with Xander, it's often four damage, um, not three. And then uh, last cards on my deck are two Fractal of Insight. I hate this card. I hate this card. Um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of necessary. Um, the reason I, I, I hate it is because when you play it early, it, is a, it replaces itself. It's a neutral card. And you can pay for memory with it. But basically, you're trying to get to level three efficiently. And this doesn't help you get to level three efficiently because you need to be, you're like, all right, I'm going to level to two. I'll play a Thieving Cut. Well, you're not going to tap Fractal. And now it's just sitting on board untapped, usually until you're level three, which means you can save less Luxem cards in your hand, like protect them from getting random banished. Um, and then once level three, it's a card on field rather than a card in memory, so then your luck or your light results to less damage. But it's really good with Dungeon Guide, and it helps you find Dungeon Guide, um, usually by like turn three when we're on level two. Um, especially with Fractal, you can look like. 18 cards down your deck. Like, say you like glimpse six, put six on bottom, draw six. You play a filter card. You drew one for turn, now you're at 14 cards. You play a fractal. Now you look two cards more down. You're at 16 cards. Next draw turn, you're at 17 cards. Like, you, you find dungeon guide very often this deck. This helps you find it, and you can tap to control your dungeon guide. Um, we tested some other things instead of this. I ended up going back to it because it was just the most generic good neutral cards, but there are other neutral cards you can play. Um, yeah, and so I, I, I'm thinking, I'm. I'm probably glad I played it. I'm definitely glad I played it, but yeah. And then moving on to the side deck. Um, I ran Quicksilver Grail for Nullifying Lantern, and then Water and Fire Bobble. Um, the reason for this is because uh, GCR is incredible. Um, and if you want to bring in Grail, you need to have GCR. There are often times where you still want to get the plus one. So against um, like erupting decks or like Fire Lorraine, you'll side out like either Safeguard against Fire Lorraine, you'll side out Tariff against erupting for the Fire Bobbles. You still have an axe plus one. Um, Mag's more against Lorraine than against erupting. Erupting, you usually just die. Um, but usually, actually, I would say, no, erupting kind of can try to race. This helps you race. The Water Bobble is because Grail is actually very good against water um, because you have a lot of important regalia like Tariff Ring and map that you materialize and your Xander trigger to put stuff down in memory that can respond, play fracturize, kill your thing. 
So you use Grail to tuck the card. Um, you hide it. You let um, Xander resolve. So they put the stuff down. Now you can banish it to play your Tariff Ring. Um, or there's also actually a cheeky thing you can do with Tariff Ring is because Tariff Ring doesn't say at the beginning of the recollection step. It just says activate during your opponent's recollection step. Um, if they put to, if they have enough cards on hand after Xander trigger, um, they can fracturize. You just hold your Grail on board. You go to their turn. Then in the recollection step, you banish Grail. You materialize Tariff Ring, and then you banish Tariff Ring. And there's no window for them to resolve fracturize that you be able to re respond with Tariff Ring. Um, so Grail is very good against water. And then same thing, you, you take out Lantern for water bobbles. You have a plus one. Um, I'm very glad that I, I didn't play against any water today. Um, but water bobble's good there. Um, so yeah, there's these. And then I played three Blanche. Um, this card is essential for Merlin and Rai. Um, you're just trying to blank as much of their effects as you can. Blanche won me games. Um, against uh, the two Rai that I played. If I played Merlin, it wins you games against Merlin. Um, it just gives you the extra buff you need to like kind of waste a fireball or waste like uh, like an advent or anything. Um, because damage, so with advent, if you don't know, damage simultaneous, they deal two damage to Blanche, and anything they would do to you is prevented. So instead they just have to like only banish one arcane if they're good to kill Blanche through the rest on top, so, like for another arc, uh, one. Um, things like that. So Blanche is really good. Um, in, it was originally in the main over Uther, but because I've cutting the um, allies, I ended up making the Uther, and I'm very glad that I did. The last card is two, Gawain. Um, thematically, got the Gawain map for regionals. Uh, Gawain is a very good card in very certain matchups. You want it against Ryan Merlin, because they're going to be like putting, tapping out, basically putting their hand down to memory. So then you can play Gawain and snipe their most important cards. Like against um, like a Ryan player, um, I was able to Gawain, rip a P, like I looked at his memory. He had like dead, dead hand, like seven cards down. I ripped his peer and just kind of like really stalled him out. Um, so Gawain is really impactful against like Merlin. You can rip an Incarnate Majesty. You can rip a Fireball. Like whatever, whatever, like the card that they need the most or like could hurt you the most, you can rip with Gawain and straight to one for one, one for one there. And against that matchup, you're signing out Resolute Sands and Uther's anyways, or you'll keep Resolute against Merlin. But like you're taking out Uther's, so um, you have room for everything. Um, and yeah, that's the deck. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. I highly recommend it. If it feels frustrating to play, yeah, um, it's it's a challenge to play. I don't want to put anyone off of playing it. It is a challenge to play. It is like the you'll start playing. You're like, oh, it's not that bad, and you'll start playing more. Like, oh, there's a lot to it, and you start playing more. And like, okay, I'm starting to get a feel for it. But like, even still, I truly think Pickle Star is the only one that like truly understands the ins and outs of this deck. Um, like almost every game he spectates on me after the match, he's like, he you messed up here, you messed up here, you could have done this, you could have done this. And um, it's, if you like technical decks, play this deck. You, there's so many like intricacies to it, you can learn a lot, a lot of fun with it. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's the entire thing. Um, shout out to True Champion Gaming um, for uh, asking me to do this deck profile. I'm very happy to do it. Um, I know a lot of people have been interested in this list in the Discord for a long time. We've been kind of tight-lipped about it, but now that we actually, we topped an event with it, um, which I'm extremely stoked for. Uh, first Loxum Top 8 in the game ever. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and thanks for having a great event. Um, shout out to Upkeep Games for hosting. This is an amazing store for everyone out in Michigan and Ann Arbor. Check it out. Very spacious, very clean, awesome. Love the shop. Um, everyone here, everyone I played against, thank you for amazing games. I didn't have a single negative experience and it was great to play against. Um, and yeah, um, so thank you again. Um, shout out to Chess Club, my team, and I will see everyone at Ontario.